Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Buckman, and I'm going to be read 16.5 The Missionaries with you. If you see on my screen, I have the textbook open on the left-hand side, as well as your Western Settlers Notes on the right-hand side. You have been assigned the missionaries, and so you will be looking for the reason for settling, why did they go west, what were some of the hardships that they faced, the difficulties, legacy, what did they leave behind, why do we still remember them, and then finally, an interesting fact, it can't be anything that you've already listed, so something that you find especially interesting that you have not already put down in your notes. So we're going to start today by reading chapter 16.5, The Missionaries. Ever since Lewis and Clark appeared among them, the Nez Perce had been friendly toward Americans. In 1831, three Nez Perce traveled to St. Louis to learn more about the white man's ways. There, the Nez Perce asked if someone would come west to teach their people the secrets of the Black Book, or Bible. Several missionaries answered that call. The best known were Marcus and Narcissa Whitman and Henry and Eliza Spaulding. In 1836, the two couples traveled west from St. Louis along the Oregon Trail. It was a difficult journey. Narcissa described the Rockies as the most terrible mountains for steepness. Still, the missionaries arrived safely in Oregon, proving that women could endure the journey west. So the first thing we're wondering is, why did they move west? Well, in this specific instance, the textbook is really clear why they moved west. They moved west because they were invited. So the Nez Perce actually invited um, them to come out and said, Hey, will you come out and teach us... Um, the secrets of your Bible, of your of your black book. And so this specific group, Marcus and Narcissa Whitman, and then Henry and Eliza Spaulding, they went west specifically to talk to the Nez Perce. So the next thing we're looking for are the hardships that they faced once they got there. A difficult start. On reaching Oregon, the group split up. The Spaldings went to work with the Nez Perce. The Whitmans worked among a neighboring group, the Cayuse. Neither couple knew very much about the people they hoped to convert. The result was a difficult start. After three years, the Spaldings finally made their first converts. In 1839, Henry baptized two Nez Perce chiefs. A year later, one of the chiefs had his infant son baptized as well. The child would grow up to be the leader best known as Chief Joseph. Chief Joseph, Chief Joseph is going to be a really, really famous Native um, leader who is going to try to save his his. Um, people from annihilation by the white men. The Whitmans were less successful. The Cayuse were far more interested in the whites' weapons and tools than in their religion. The couple also offended the Cayuse. They refused to pay for the land they took for their mission or to offer visitors gifts, as was the Indians' custom. Not a single Cayuse converted to the new faith. And so I think the first thing that we need to learn about is that, um, first off, that the, the way there was difficult, and so that's a huge issue. Um, the fact that it was extremely difficult to travel, um, that would be a hardship. Also, that um, they didn't really make a whole lot of converts. I know there's not really anything specifically to highlight here for the Spaldings, but really, they only baptized two Nez Perce chiefs. That's that's not really that many after working for for three years. Um, and the Whitmans did even less. So they were not really interested in the religion that the Whitmans had. They were more interested in their weapons and tools. And so they weren't, neither group was really able to make um, very many converts. And so it was a pretty hard job. And so that's what you're going to be making sure that you write down for hardships faced. A Pioneer's Paradise. Marcus Whitman was far more successful at converting Americans over to the belief that Oregon was a pioneer's paradise. It does not concern me so much what is to become of any particular set of Indians, he wrote. Our greatest work is to aid the white settlement of this country and to help found its religious institutions. In 1842, Marcus traveled east on horseback. Along the way, he urged Americans to settle in Oregon. On his return, he guided a large group of settlers along the Oregon Trail. More settlers soon followed. The poor Indians are amazed at the overwhelming number of Americans coming into the country, observed Narcissa. They seem not to know what to make of it. In 1847, measles came west with the settlers and swept through the Whitman mission. Marcus treated the sick as best he could. The Cayuse noticed that whites usually recovered, while their own people were dying. Rumors spread that Whitman was giving deadly pills to Indians. Cayuse Indians attacked the mission, killing both Marcus and Narcissa. And so here we have another um, hardship. Both of these um, 
missionaries were murdered, and they were murdered because of a misunderstanding. They didn't realize that the whites had a certain immunity to measles, whereas the Native Americans who had never come across this disease had no immunity and were much more um, prone to die of the disease than the missionaries were. The missionaries' legacy. Like the Spanish priests in California, American preachers in Oregon hoped their legacy would be large numbers of Christian Indians. In fact, relatively few Indians became Christians. Many, however, died of the diseases that came west with the missionaries. The missionaries' true legacy was to open the west to settlement. In California, Oregon, and other territories, settlers followed in the footsteps of the missionaries. And so they did not actually convert very many Indians. Their true legacy was to open the west to settlement. Um, it was the settlers who followed in their footsteps. Remember that Marcus Whitman actually went basically down the Oregon Trail saying, come to Oregon, come to Oregon, come to Oregon. It's amazing, come to Oregon. And so that's really why we remember them, not because of the fact that they converted large numbers of Native Americans, because they simply didn't. And so the last thing you need to find is your interesting fact, and you're going to be putting everything into your your um, notes page and turning that into your slideshow. Good luck, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.